Welcome to Maui, Hawaii. This is the third part of this Hawaii travel guide. We end this vacation on Maui, the most beautiful of the three islands from this trip. We start our Maui vacation at this phenomenon called the Nakili Blowhole. A small five to 10 minute hike brings you to the blowhole. From this small hole in the rock, water launches into the air when the waves come crashing. This phenomenon is astounding and a great place to check out here on the northwest side of Maui. On a hot day, the mist feels really nice. And as long as you don't do anything really dumb, you are totally safe here. Some people, for some reason, think this is a really dangerous spot. Have some caution and you'll be safe. You need to check out the Nakili Blowhole. Now, as a bonus, if you look around and just go slightly the other direction, you will come to this heart-shaped hole in a rock. And now for my favorite spot in Maui, the Olivine Pools. And one of the best things is that people don't know about them. A 10 minute casual hike down the hill brings you to this inlet. Huge waves just crash all around you here. But like you're in the eye of the storm, the pools are as calm as can be. They placed signs and a headstone here to try and scare you away from this location. But if you have any sense of caution, you are fine. And you can just chill and see these massive waves just crashing all around you. I'm telling you, the olivine pools are incredible. Just come here and chill. Put your feet in the water, read a book or whatever you want, and just enjoy the sounds and the senses and the surprisingly chill atmosphere of these waves crashing all around you. The next morning we ate at Maui's most coveted diner, the Gazebo Restaurant. If you are willing to wait over an hour, this is my favorite restaurant on Maui. It does not take reservations. It has an amazing view of the ocean and there are no bad seats. To top it off, their food is amazing. And both my wife and myself love the food here. In fact, I'll give you a tip. The best time to go for a smaller line is actually near lunchtime. Now we move on to a helicopter ride over the islands. Maui is the best place in Hawaii to take a helicopter ride. It has the most beautiful waterfalls and valleys from above and to go through and get next to. This is no ordinary helicopter either. It is a doors off helicopter ride which has a couple of perks over other helicopter rides. Most obviously you get to feel the cool Hawaiian air and don't feel all cooped up like on other helicopter rides. Maybe not so obvious of a perk is that there are no bad seats in these doors off helicopters. Just look at the views of these waterfalls. You also fly above some of the smaller Hawaiian islands. My favorite part was the shoreline sea cliffs and waterfalls of Molokai. It looks surreal and this video just doesn't even do it justice. Other great things about this flight is they let you use a camera unlike other doors off helicopters. Up in the air you feel fresh and over every peak is another beautiful valley, waterfall or shoreline that make this flight exhilarating. Seeing Maui from above is a must do while on Hawaii, so I'd use this company. And one time we asked if we can go to an area again and the pilot turned around and gave us another pass near our favorite waterfall. I will link to this doors off helicopter along with all the other things I do in my Hawaii travel guide in the description below this video. Most vacationers in Maui, like us, decide to stay in the city of Lahaina. And here's my favorite restaurant in Lahaina, the Lahaina Pizza Company. The view from this restaurant is amazing and their pizza cannot be beat. So relaxing and this is one of the two don't miss restaurants in Maui. But you will just enjoy the chill atmosphere at the Lahaina Pizza Company, I guarantee it. The road to Hana is the number one thing to do on Maui. This extremely scenic drive is all about the journey and unlike the title suggests, is not about the destination of Hana. All along the way, there are stops that are different ways to enjoy and experience this rainforest. I recommend getting up as early as possible for the road to Hana, because first, there's more than a day's worth of things to do, and second, to beat all the rest of the tourists to some of the attractions. We first stopped at the Garden of Eden, but my wife and I love animals, and we wanted to see the peacocks that roam in this park. They are one of nature's most exquisite creatures and you can get right up close and take some pictures with them. 
but if you like to enjoy nature with just a casual stroll, this is a good place to do so. But there are definitely more exciting locations along the road to Hana than this. Next, I'm going to take you to a secret waterfall that only a few people know about. Now, I will share the secret with you, sort of. This unknown path is a 20 to 30 minute hike of rock hopping up a hidden valley until you get to this secret peaceful cove with a picturesque waterfall. Its main appeal is that no one knows about it, and that is how the locals want it to stay. The hike and the cove are like a magical dreamland, and I will give you a hint. Your hint is that it only has one parking spot along the road to Hana, and it is a hidden entrance. To find this waterfall, you have to want it, but it is so worth it. Everything else on the road to Hana can be found in this book. I recommend buying it and planning out what sounds most interesting to you in this book. I will link to it below. Down the way is the Kiane Arboretum. Now, I mispronounce everything, so I'm sorry for that. When I first saw this in the book, I overlooked it. But it is a quick easy stop and has the coolest trees on all the island. It is well worth a stop to see the palm and banyan trees among a variety of others. But the best trees are the rainbow eucalyptus trees. They make an awesome background of colors for an up close shot as well. A quick detour from the road to Hana is the Kiane Peninsula. It is a great place to relax and take in the scenery of the coastline and see some of the homes and a nearby church. What makes this small town even more worth it is that by this point you're probably getting a little hungry. And Aunt Sandy's banana bread is the best. And it's also a great place to stop and eat. The best place for Hawaiian shaved ice is featured in my Oahu travel guide. I will link to that video at the end of this video. But most shaved ice here on the island is good, just like here at the Halfway to Hana. Like I said, there is too much to do in one day on the road to Hana. In fact, Hana itself only has one thing that I love to do, and I didn't even get to do it this trip. This is a trike. It is basically a motorized hang glider, and it is still one of the coolest things I've ever done. The footage here isn't that great because it's before I started travel vlogging. Starting on this random runway in Hana, you take off, and really get to see the rainforest from above. And I highly recommend this, especially if you didn't get to do the doors off helicopter ride from the beginning of this video. Make sure you book this way in advance and I will link to it below. Next we make our way to Wai'anapa Napa State Park. And this is another must do while in Hawaii. Unfortunately, everybody else knows this is a must do as well. It is most famous for its black sand beach. If you have never been to a black sand beach, this one is really impressive. What makes this black sand beach stand out more than others is its strikingly vibrant colors. The water is a crystal blue and the foliage is a bright green, making this beach a sensory overload. If you watch my Big Island video, I visit my other favorite black sand beach and that one is not very busy at all. Because there's so many people here, to make this slightly more personal, I recommend going on a five minute stroll to the edge of the rocks where the vegetation is most vibrant and sit right next to where the waves crash. It is such a cool little area and slightly more secluded than the rest of the beach. Next to the main beach, there's a small cave that opens to the ocean. It is a pretty little gem that a lot of people miss just walking right by it. When you find the small cave, it opens into a beautiful silhouette for pictures, should you so choose. And as you can see here, the sand is magical. The PPY Trail and the Seven Sacred Pools are my last must stop along the road to Hana. First you hike along the tall grass, or whatever that is, to an overlook where you can see a large distant waterfall. You make your way to this old majestic banyan tree. It is a nice place to relax and climb. After that, you cross a few old bridges. Here my wife is reenacting a movie. Can you guess which one? Okay. Anyway, my favorite part of this trail is the bamboo forest. At points, the bamboo towers over you and makes this amazing tunnel to walk through. And it really feels mystic as you walk through them. At the end of this trail, you are rewarded with another breathtaking and huge waterfall. Near the Seven Sacred Pools is the Wailua Falls. It is a quick and very magnificent waterfall. You can see it from the road. If you want a lot of waterfall for just a little bit of effort, the Wailua Falls for you. To be 
be honest, I am always astounded this place isn't even more packed. And it opens into this pretty little cove to take a dip in and breathe the fresh Hawaiian air. Now, if you want to know what to do on Oahu and the big island of Hawaii, watch my other travel videos. Below, I link to the things I did in this video and my equipment. Comment on any questions that you have about Hawaii and I will answer them below. Like this video if it helped you out and subscribe to mine or my wife's makeup channel.